Hey hunters, now that the honeymoon phase is over and the clouds of reddit coping have finally begun to clear, it is time to shed a hard light on Iceborne's major flaws. This video will be focused entirely on Iceborne from a speedrunner's angle, so if you came in here expecting me to rant about the grinding lands or how your drumstick dual blades don't meet your visual aesthetic expectations, this is not the video for you. Iceborne shares many of the same issues I had with the base game, except it doubled down on some of the problems and it also introduced some new ones as well. I have compiled a list of reasons in order of offense to why I think Iceborne is a bad game to speedrun. Reason 1. The Clutch Claw Tenderize When Capcom first introduced the Clutch Claw, we all looked at this new tool with very heavy skepticism. Just the idea of having some grappling hook you could get on monsters with to do these handful of different actions was just absurd from the Monster Hunter core combat perspective. I myself was not really sold on the idea until I really got a feel for it. And to be honest, in action the claw mechanic is quite fun to use. I played entirely Hammer and Iceborne, so I might be a bit biased about this, but the claw follow-ups felt very natural, and the wall bang is always fun to execute and watch. I also really like the enraged shortcut mechanic after you do the triple slap on the monster, giving us speedrunners more ways to begin dishing out more damage quickly. However, what I did not like about the clutch claw was the introduction of the tenderize feature, which will soften a monster's part in order to do more damage to it. This tenderized feature by itself turns the claw from simply being a neat new tool I can play with into an over-centralizing part of the combat. Applying and maintaining these spots softened is incredibly tedious and annoying. The tenderized property only lasts about 90 seconds, which is a minuscule amount of time relative to what the new monster fights lengths are. Capcom to give us openings to apply the new claw tenderize gave us the new clutch claw stagger, or clagger for short. I don't like these at all because they basically force the player to clutch claw in order to really maximize the opportunity. Forcing the player to take very specific actions makes the game really boring to watch in my opinion. Unfortunately the claw tenderize issue isn't something that I believe that will be changed. This is only reason number one however, so although I find the claw tenderize mechanic annoying and boring, it pales in comparison to some of the bigger mistakes Iceborne has made further down on my list. Reason 2. Missing optionals and rotating quests. How is it possible that we don't have Runa Nergante and Scarred Yangaruga quests? To be honest, I don't have much to talk about here except to ask the question, why Capcom? I also don't understand why arena quest cycle. Arena quests should always be available to the player. To be honest, I think Capcom views the arena as a shortcut way for the player to quickly grab a monster drop, so it's the reason they deemed the quest too much of a gift to keep it available. I'd rather them just remove rewards from the arena quests and make them available always. Damn it Capcom, get a grip! Reason number 3. Returning base world problems. I grouped together all issues I had of base world in here that Iceborne either didn't change or remade new iterations of the same problem. If you aren't familiar with Monster Hunter World's general issues, I will cover them quickly in this section. Coral Orchestra RNG makes a return in Iceborne. Coral Orchestra is the Palico equipment which gave the Palico the ability to randomly give the player a wide array of buffs. One of these buffs was a 12% attack boost which would we speedrunners would grind for. The chance of getting this buff is probably as low as 5-10% to of the time, making speedrunning without TA wiki rules a giant reset fest for the best times. Another atrocity that made a comeback was Spare Shot. This skill gave gunners a 20% chance to not expand a shot when firing. Not only did Capcom say they nerfed it, but didn't, but they gave us a charm now that gives us the skill for free. Many gunner speedruns farm for spare shot RNG, so you can see how this makes speedrunning with gunning weapons extremely annoying. But wait, Capcom did not stop there. They did not only give us a spare shot demon back, but gave us the Zenogra heavy bowgun, aka Glutton 2.0. Oh, and let's also give it a scope that increases its damage by, you know, 30%. Glutton in base world was an absolute walk-in exploit, and Capcom seems to have brought it back without a shame. So much for balance. The last two things that are back are daily skills and HP rolls. Daily skills are just random skills that are generated in the canteen every time you go and get your buffs. And the HP rolls are just the random health a monster can have when the quest is booted up. If you weren't aware of it before, you're aware of it now. Monster health can vary even on the same quest. Thanks Capcom. Reason 4. Drunk Bird Changes In base world, wing drakes that dropped you into the map had a chance of dropping you in a random area of the map. Capcom saw how everyone hated it 
So instead of removing it, they thought it'd be a good idea to change it to drop you in either a good gathering spot or on top of the same area as the monster itself. I cannot put into words how much this has destroyed my motivation to run this game. Drunk bird drops are now common enough to grind for, but not rare enough that attempting a complex strategy using them is not out of the scope of a player with no job and infinite time. Now not only do I have to grind for RNG that was present in the base game, but now also for the stupid bird to drop me on the monster. This change is one of the major reasons Iceborne speedrunning is now just a complete joke to me. The drunk bird changes are an absolute blow to speedrunners who want to speedrun this game. It has channeled many of us into doing arena speedruns, mostly which are now just getting incredibly repetitive to watch. So TSC, why do you care about drunk bird when TA wiki rules will probably ban them anyways? Well, I wish the solution was that simple, but the last reason why I think Iceborne is a bad game to speedrun completely destroys TA wiki players from being able to speedrun outside the arena as well. Reason 5. The Unstoppable Limps When a monster reaches a certain HP threshold in Monster Hunter, it begins limping to its nest. The limps have always been an issue to stop, but in base world we have the ability of interrupting these limps with staggers, flinches, or status procs such as KOs, mounts, or sleeps which would briefly re-engage the monster and give the player another short window to finish the fight. In Iceborne, however, for some godforsaken reason, this was changed. Monsters now do not stop, but simply take the hit and continue on their way. This change is absolute cancer, and is the reason you see so many TA wiki runs in the arena only. This change is not okay, and is something that needs to be patched back to how it was pre-Iceborne ASAP. It is a travesty that Capcom gives us all these beautiful environments to play with, with much improved AI, only to destroy it all with such a garbage change to the limp mechanic. Arena runs are already so overdone, I don't even click on them anymore. Iceborne just isn't getting the same attention as Base World did, and I believe the reasons I listed are what is holding it back from really becoming a great Monster Hunter game. Thanks for listening, peace out.